there is only one skill out there that everyone in tech needs to have. And learning this skill is definitely going to skyrocket your career in ways that you could never imagine. I'm a 27 year old mechatronics and a software engineer with over four years of experience in the industry. And when I first started applying this skill to my career, I was able to master new skills at a much faster rate, fast track my promotions, earn a much higher salary, and overall just stand out from the crowd a bit more. But the annoying thing is that it took me over two years of constantly searching for ways to improve myself to finally come across this skill, fully understand what it is and what its potential is, and finally apply it to my career. Because let's be honest, neither the education system nor the tech industry really talks about this skill much at all, even though it's so important. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about what that skill is, how you can get better at it, and how you can start applying it to your career, irrespective of if you're just a student starting out in tech or if you're someone with over a decade of experience in the industry. So to illustrate what this skill is, I really want you to pause the video and see if you can figure out the words that should fill in these blanks in this sentence over here. Now, you probably read the sentence once, didn't really understand it, so you probably reread it from start to finish again a few times, in the hopes that something would eventually click in your mind. And at some point, you probably decided that a better strategy might be to plug in the words into the blanks and reread the sentence again a few more times to see if that makes sense. But you probably hit another roadblock, which is you might not know what most of these words even mean, because they aren't commonly used words, right? And at that point, you probably gave up and unpaused the video to see what the solution was and what the point is that I'm trying to make. Now what I just described actually represents how most people out there think, which is that they outsource solving problems to their subconscious minds. But what if I told you that you're actually able to solve this problem as your mind is right now? It's just that you're not using your mind in the correct way to solve this problem. So to prove that, well, let's try an alternative approach where whenever we come across anything that confuses us or doesn't make sense, we pause and try to reason about the thing that's confusing us. So Let's start off by rereading the sentence again. 20th century America. So what does 20th century America actually represent in this sentence? Like what is its purpose in this sentence? And if you think about it, it's actually the subject of the sentence. It's what the sentence is talking about. 20th century America witnessed a nearly blank ascent to ever greater wealth. Ascent to ever greater wealth. So what does that exactly mean? Well, ascent means to climb and ever greater wealth sounds like it means a new level of wealth. So it sounds like the first part of this sentence is saying something along the lines of 20th century America reached a new level of wealth. A nearly blank ascent to ever greater wealth. So what does a nearly blank represent over here? What is it trying to do in this sentence? It seems like whatever word would fill in the blank is trying to describe the type of ascent that 20th century America saw. And when you reach a higher level of wealth, that's generally a good thing. So a nearly blank is probably trying to describe this ascent and make it seem like it was special in some sort of way. Or maybe it could be something like a nearly unyielding or a nearly continuous or a nearly unprecedented ascent to ever greater wealth. So something along those lines that makes this ascent seem grand. Now let's look at the second part of this sentence. Leaving its leaders blank of publicly acknowledging budgetary limitations. What exactly does budgetary limitations mean in this sentence? If 20th century America was reaching a new level of wealth, then perhaps the budget that the the country had wasn't able to keep up with this ascent, hence the budgetary limitations, right? So that actually starts to make sense. Why would they would have budgetary limitations? Publicly acknowledging budgetary limitations. But if your country had budgetary limitations, you'd probably be unhappy if a leader came up to you and told you that, right? Like, hey, your country has budgetary limitations. We don't know what to do with all of this wealth that's coming into the country. So if that's the case, then its leaders would be probably unwilling to or cautious of public acknowledging the budgetary limitation because they don't want to upset the public or cause turmoil. So now that we reasoned about this entire sentence that way, the general picture is starting to make sense, right? This sentence is generally trying to say that 20th century America climbed to a new level of wealth or ascended to a new level of wealth. And that ascent was special, right? It was grand. It was maybe continuous. It was unyielding. It was just basically special. And because of this, there were budgetary limitations that surfaced. And because of those budgetary limitations, the leader 
leaders were unwilling or cautious of publicly acknowledging those limitations. But it seems like that's what this sentence is trying to say. So hopefully you can see that by pausing and thinking about the individual bits of information, reasoning about them and trying to connect them with each other, we were able to form a much better understanding of the sentence than when we try to passively read the sentence over and over again. Now let's move on to the next part of the problem, which is these words over here. They don't really make sense. And let's be honest, most people wouldn't know the meanings of these words because they're unconventional. You wouldn't use them in everyday speech, right? Luckily, we live in a world of Google where we can just search for an easier definition of each of these words. And I've gone ahead and done that over here. At this point, I'm pretty sure that you should have a much better understanding of the sentence than when you passively read it before. And now that we've replaced all these complex words with much simpler ones, I'm sure that if you tried again, you'd be able to figure out what the solution to this problem is without me or anyone else having to tell you what the answer is. So by walking you through this process, I basically wanted to highlight a key skill. And if you haven't already figured it out, the skill I'm talking about is problem solving, which can go by a lot of different names like critical thinking, critical reasoning, logical reasoning, and so on and so forth. But this skill is basically the ability to take a problem that seems complex or difficult to solve, break it down into smaller problems that are easier to reason about, reason about each of those sub problems and come up with mini solutions to those sub problems and eventually combine all of those mini solutions and reasonings to come up with an overall solution to the problem that seemed complex in the first place. At this point, you might be wondering why this skill is even important in tech, right? When it comes to tech, problem solving is going to be crucial for your success in the industry because as you progress through your career, you're going to be given more and more complex problems to solve. And each of those problems are going to require you to think innovatively and come up with brand new solutions. Think about all the problems that Apple and Steve Jobs faced when they worked on the world's first iPhone, which at the time was a device that allowed you to control it through a touchscreen. And this was in a time where pretty much all the phones out there had physical buttons on them. Or think about all the problems that Tesla and Elon Musk faced when they tried to come up with a cheaper way to manufacture batteries so they could be used in electric cars for long distance travel, which by the way was a key blocker to electric vehicles at the time. Now granted that some people might say that Tesla might not be considered a tech company, it's a car company. The point that I'm trying to make is that unlike some other industries, in tech, a quick Google search isn't always going to give you the answer that you're looking for. It might give you smaller pieces of information, but never really the whole solution that you're looking for. And that's because most companies in this industry are innovating or coming up with new solutions to a certain extent. So they're most likely going to be hiring you to work on problems that have never really been worked on before. And that's where your problem solving skills are going to be crucial. Your ability to take on that problem that's never been worked on before, break it down into smaller problems that are easier to reason about, solve each of those smaller problems, combine those solutions to eventually come up with an overarching solution is basically going to define the progress that you see in your career. Employers basically value problem solving very highly and they want to hire people that can essentially take on these complex problems and provide them with creative solutions. So ultimately, the complexity of the problem that you work on is going to determine what position you're going to be given at a certain company. And if that argument doesn't convince you, then I want you to think about anyone who's in a position that you look up to in the tech industry, right? So on paper, most of these people who are either CTOs or tech leads or industry leaders have pretty much the same qualifications and the same number of years of experience than many of their other peers. But what sets them apart is their ability to problem solve and come up with creative solutions or new solutions. Okay, so maybe I've convinced you on the importance of problem solving and now you're wondering how you can get better at it or if it's even possible to get better at it because maybe you don't really think in a problem solving way. But luckily, problem solving skills aren't innate. So it's not something you're born with. It's something that you can develop over time. And there's plenty of research out there to show that you can change the way your brain thinks. But I won't get into that now. Instead, I'll leave a link in the description for anyone that's interested in that research. But basically to get better at problem solving, there's a six step process that you need to take. The first thing you need to do is to be willing to put in the work and the effort to get better at problem solving. Training your mind to think differently can be very hard to do. And a lot of the times you're going to be frustrated because you're going to feel like you didn't come up with the solution fast enough, or you didn't think a certain way, or you weren't happy with the way you thought about a solution. And that can be quite demotivating at times, right? Which is why in those moments, it's going to be important to remind yourself 
why you're doing this in the first place. And to remind yourself that this is a skill that will improve over time, so you just need to keep persevering. The second thing you need to do is to start applying this skill at every opportunity that you get. So start looking for problems in your everyday life that can be framed in a problem solving sort of way. So for example, if a sale is going on in a supermarket, trying to decide what the best milk to buy during that sale might be a good problem solving task. Or maybe if you want to wake up at 6 a.m. tomorrow, deciding on what the perfect time to go to bed at so that you're well rested the next day can be a good problem solving task as well. So the point that I'm trying to make with this is that even the most trivial tasks can be reframed in a way to help you think about it logically. The next thing you're going to want to do is reframe questions that seem vague or too complex to think about in a way that's easier to reason about. So for example, instead of asking yourself, how do I land a job in a certain company? Maybe ask yourself, what skills are employers actually looking for? And how can I learn and showcase those skills to these employers? The next thing you're going to want to do is once you've reframed your initial question in a way that's easier to reason about, you're basically going to do what we did at the beginning of the video, which is take that problem, break it down into sub problems, reason about those sub problems to come up with smaller solutions, and then combine all of those solutions to come up with an overarching solution to your problem. Step five is that you should probably subscribe to this channel. Learning from others can be one of the best ways to learn a new skill quickly. And on this channel, I want to show you how problem solving can be applied to build a variety of different projects like this AI that I built that's able to basically navigate through any apartment that you could generate or this AI that I built that's basically able to solve the hardest game of snake. And instead of showing you all the technical steps that I took to build these projects, I'll be showing you how I went about thinking about these problems in the first place and the general solutions that I took to solve the problems, which should empower you with a framework to essentially go out there and build your dream project. And the last and final step is to keep practicing. I promise that if you keep practicing on a daily basis, you're eventually going to get much better at this skill. And when that happens, you're going to be up here in comparison to all the other competition in the industry.